We get to hop in a machine with wings on it, take off 10,000 feet into the air. Who does that? We do. This is Mike. He's a commercial pilot working on his certified flight instructor rating out of downtown Island Home Airport here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today we're taking this Piper Dakota to the well-known BQ-1 airport to pig out at the Pick and Pig in Carthage, North Carolina. This flight is a little bit different for several reasons, first of which is that this is a flying club plane. Flying clubs are a great solution for pilots who want to have choices in what they fly, without the burden of ownership. We'll talk a little bit more about how flying clubs make aviation more accessible to more people. But right now, let's get the plane started and get us fed. Downtown traffic, Dakota 8 through November taxiing from the Shape Ports to the Rump area for 26 downtown. After a short taxi and systems check, we're at the end of the runway and ready to go. Bob, so we're going to take off with a knot. Carburetor heat is off. Mixture is set. Primers in. Box McNeils are on both. Are you ready to roll? I'm ready. All right. Flying straight from Knoxville to Carthage would send us through a busy Bravo airspace in Charlotte. And with their runways running north to south, we would definitely interfere with traffic there. So Mike has chosen a slightly less direct route to avoid it altogether. It doesn't add much time to our flight, so it's worth it to do a slight diversion. With the flight plan entered in the GPS, the only thing left to do now is fly. Downtown traffic, Dakota 83 November, gonna line up and wait runway 26 downtown. Alrighty, lights, camera, action. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Airspeed is alive. Engine is looking good. Downtown traffic, Dakota 8 through November, left crosswind, runway 26, get downwind departure to the east, downtown. Alrighty, 1,000 feet, fuel pump off, fuel pressure check, back to 25. The manifold pressure for the climb. Fox approach, Dakota 9 or 0, 8 through November. Bravo, Quebec I don't want 1, you airport as filed, trying to maintain 9 or 1,000. Bravo, Quebec 1, as filed, up to 9 or 1,000, Dakota 9 or 0, 8 through November. All right, here we go. They're on our way. Now that we're in the air and stable for a while, let's get into the flying club and how it's a great access point for pilots whose needs fit clubs and what they have to offer. Tell me a little bit about how the club works and, and what, we're, what we're flying in today. Uh, we're flying in a Piper Dakota. It's a high performance, uh, 235 horsepower Cherokee. Uh, probably my favorite plane in the club. I've been a member of the club for going on two years now. And you pay an initial uh, fee to join. And then you've got an hourly rate uh, on with you know based on whatever airplane you're, you're using, obviously. And, you know, arranges based on you know performance and stuff. So, how's the scheduling work? Is that easy? Um, it actually is. They've got a um, they've got a website that you go to and and schedule electronically, and and so it uh, it keeps track of everything. You can um, you know they've got a couple particulars. Um, you can only have three reservations at once, so you know it kind of keeps people from from. Uh, abusing the, the reservations and stuff and holding the plane for too long and stuff. Right. But it's neat. It's uh it's it's an awesome opportunity to um fly different types of airplanes and uh you know not have to worry about a lot of the ownership costs, which I'm sure you know all about. I uh, do know all about that. You know, you you know I know I'm paying eighty five dollars a month and I'm paying you know a lot more up front, but uh, I've done the work up on ownership. And if you factor in all the Perfect money you need to put aside for a new engine every yeah, 2,000 like hours and stuff like that, it's really comparable to, um, right to you know, what it costs to own. How does it work when you've got, when you want to take a longer trip? Like, I know that with my plane, I just go, and I go where I want, I don't have to check in with anybody. How does it work with the club? Um, you can, it's, you know, it's first come, first serve on the, on the reservations, you know. You know, I'm planning on going to, um, Air Venture in Wisconsin uh, in July, and so I've got the plane booked for about 10 days. I'm planning on going to a fly-in just south of there uh, the weekend prior, and then spending the weekend 
but so I booked it for the whole week. Know that you've got a minimum time per day that you have. Sure. You have it for 10 days. They want you to, you know, they want you to have a minimum of an hour per day or something like that, okay. just so you don't abuse having the plane and not flying. You know, they're not making any money while you're holding it. Gotcha. That's not so bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. In that respect, it's a lot cheaper than owning a plane, especially considering the fact that you uh, you get to you know, mix it up. Like I only have one plane, right? Which is you know enough for me, but. Uh, but you you essentially have six planes that you can fly at any time as long as you're checked out. In. Yeah, and another really nice thing is is um, you know today for example we've got this plane uh, you know has a lot faster cruise. It's a nice cross country platform that the club has, and I can you know we can get there a whole lot quicker. It's a little bit more expensive an hour, but I, I did the math and anything anything over about an hour and a half or so. The cost, you know, the, the speed you're picking up, actually, it's cheaper to fly the more expensive plane because it's taking you less time to get there. That makes sense, um, yeah. Okay, so tell me about where we're going to eat today. Do you know much about it? Um, other than uh, checking out their website, it's uh, as far as I've heard, uh, the airport was basically built around this barbecue place. Um, it's a pretty small airport. Yeah, but they've got a, I've heard they've got a great barbecue place on the field, and about to find out today. This is a very short field, very narrow field. Yeah, it's definitely the narrowest I've been on. It's it's actually the shortest too. I wouldn't I wouldn't exactly consider it. I'm not going to be doing the short field technique or anything on my landings, but it's definitely uh, the shortest one I've landed on. It's 2,500 feet by uh, 36 feet wide. So the the um, I think the narrowest runway I've I've been on is 75 feet wide. So. Uh, it's about like landing on half of downtown yeah. islands uh, runway. So the place that we're going to, it's uh, the airport identifier is BQ1, which is appropriate because we're going to a barbecue restaurant. Fairly well known if you live in the southeast. Yeah, this is my first time over towards Charlotte area, so it, it'll be cool. I, I go across the mountains all the time, but I. Um, I typically go towards South Carolina side. You know, I got some friends in Columbia, and these mountains are beautiful. We're now over the Smoky Mountains, past the border with North Carolina and Tennessee. The terrain flattens out as we put the mountains behind us and head further into the flatter land of central North Carolina. And before you know it, we're making our descent into Carthage. On the ground, there's lots of activity. This place is different from most of the on-field restaurants I've been to. People are watching planes, checking out the vintage Warbird, and sitting around enjoying each other's company. And it's a beautiful day to do it, but it's time to eat. Let's get into it. Well, we made it. We made it to the Pick and Pig. That was awesome. This place is pretty cool. I like it. It's a, it's a little more, I guess, stylized than I expected. I expected it to be like, you know, like some like old rundown tin shack or whatever. <laughs> it's pretty close to it. Uh, that runway is narrow, yeah. short, and it makes it feel like it's coming at you. Yeah, we, definitely, we definitely caught some tailwind yeah. at the end, too. So. Felt really fast. So tell me about how you got into flying. I've wanted to fly my whole life. I um, wanted to be a jet fighter pilot when I was a kid. Long story short, never went into the military. Let somebody talk me out of it. Told me I was too tall. You are pretty tall. Yeah, I, I probably there's probably a couple jets I couldn't fit in. But I've always wanted to do it, but it was never on my radar until 2012. And I went to church with a guy who um, was a pilot at a downtown Allen home, and um, it ended up getting his CFI buddy to take me up on the Discovery flight. And so this was this was 2012. I ended up training. Couple, probably about five, six hours before I realized I needed to get my money together and knock all the training out at once. So, fast forward um, six years later, I finally got the you know got the money together and just knocked out my private. Um, I say knocked it out. Um, some of the hurdles were my uh, medical. I have a prosthetic leg. That's right, prosthetic leg. It was a long time after meeting Mike that I even realized he had a prosthetic leg. He's a testament to the credo, how bad do you want it? I've seen him drive past handicapped parking spots and walk a long distance when he didn't have to. 
He's the type of guy who quietly and humbly tackles roadblocks that would stop the less determined. His tenacity is an admirable quality that motivates those that make it into his bubble. What's that process like? How do you go, um, like, I mean, having a prosthetic leg, like, do you go, like, Basically, it's not, if, if certain things, you know, will trigger what's called a soda, a statement of demonstrated ability. Um, and I just have to basically perform for an FAA examiner and show that I can, you know, possibly control the aircraft, one of the issues controlling the aircraft. And uh, that's basically what I had to do. But that uh, process was like four months long? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, the four months was essentially setting up the appointment to do it. Oh, okay. But, I mean, it was like a guy it took, for them to even open my file, I think it took almost uh, three months before they even opened it. Saved by the dinner bell. We're both ready to eat, and Mike's ready to talk about anything else. What'd you get? I got pulled pork and smoked chicken. Hell yeah, why not both? Why not both? And I got the pulled pork platter. All right, let's eat. Which one is that? Is that the spicy one? The spicy, yeah. I kind of like to try it on its own without sauce first and then add the sauce. The sauce is always good. That's pretty good barbecue. What I like about that Carolina style is it's not as ketchupy. Mm -hmm. It's more like it's vinegar thinner. based. Yeah, it's thinner. So it's more like a hot sauce than it is a barbecue sauce. I like some hot sauce. That's good. That's spicy. Mm -hmm. I'm into it. Oh man. Mm. That was my first time having butter on hush puppies, but I will do it again. Yeah. How much longer do you think you've got to get your CFI? I am hoping, I'm probably about 25%, 30% maybe through doing all my um, lesson plans and outlines and stuff. I'm hoping by July. That's kind of my, my goal. Excellent. How's the chicken? Really good. It's one of my favorite things to smoke at home. Mm. I don't have the patience for it. Like, I don't want to get up at two in the morning. But I started doing them at night. <clears throat> you only put smoke on it until it gets to an internal temperature of about 150. Okay. And then you wrap it up and you can put it in your oven. You know, it doesn't matter if it's in the smoker anymore because you wrap it in foil and it's not getting the smoke anyway. About midnight, I wrap it up and turn it down to 200 and let it go overnight. It's ready by lunchtime. Yeah, I love barbecue, but I'd much rather somebody else do it for me. Yeah. So tell me about your uh, favorite trip that you've taken in a GA plane. I think it would, I think my longest and my favorite actually is probably um, New Orleans. I, mainly for food. I mean, I went there, tour the food and stuff there. Right. It was incredible. Yeah, it's weird to think that to get into a plane so that you can go eat. But I mean, like that's what we're doing. You know. I think it's my favorite thing to do. I love it. That's my definite. My two passions. Mm -hmm. Airplanes and food, I'm a big foodie. Absolutely. When I first started flying, it was, I had this epiphany. I was like, there are restaurants on field? I definitely need to be doing more of that. This is my first time doing it, actually. I've, I've flown, um, that's crazy. I've flown tons of times to go eat, but typically it was to get a, you know, fly into a city, get a courtesy car. I did it last night, actually. But this is my first time flying to an on field. So Matt Guthmiller, he started a website called Trusty Pilot, and it gives a listing of all the airports that have on field. If you're looking for something that's just, just off field, it has a list of that as well. So you can either go on field or close by. I remember you telling me about that website, but I didn't know it was Matt Guthmiller. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Dessert has me intrigued, and there's so many of them there that look amazing. Oh, yes. so I can't. Out of the key lime pie, though. Okay, that cuts down a really good option. <laughs> um, what is Coca Cola cake? That is like a chocolate cake that is made with Coke okay. and chocolate frosting. Oh. It's pretty tasty. So, how good is the better than sex, and what's that? That one is our chocolate one. That one has chocolate cake. I love the chocolate one. 
the... Better than sex. You want the, all right, give yeah. it a try. Yeah, yeah I was like, um, I'm gonna do the apple and crisp with ice cream. Apple crisp with ice cream. All you right. decided not to go Coca-Cola? Yeah, it's... it's uh, <laughs> Should we get really decadent and split one? You got a third one? Yeah. Oh, good to Yeah, let's go Coca-Cola as well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's dessert, and it's kind of far away, so... You know, it'll be a while before we come back. We should take advantage. I don't pass up desserts very often. Yeah, that's it. All righty. Man, this is silly in a good way. All right, let's divvy this up. Dessert time. Let's eat. Ugh. There were desserts on the menu that sounded good that we didn't get. Better than sex is pretty good. Is it though? Hmm? Is it it's name? not. Okay. What to say? Does his name ring true? No. It's good. Are we discussing the better than? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and while it is very good. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met a gentleman that said it was. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies have? Oh, absolutely. Oh, man, I, I apologize <laughs> on behalf of men everywhere for the ladies to say that that's better than sex. It's really good, but... I'm glad you liked yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely my favorite. I like that the Coca-Cola cake is warm. It's pretty good. It's definitely strange. I didn't get a... Of course, I don't drink Coke, so maybe I don't remember what it tastes like, but I didn't get any Coca-Cola flavor, really. Yeah, it's pr only a little. I'd say they probably just used it for gun. And just in time, we stepped out to see my new obsession and the strangest plane I think I've ever seen. I don't know what that is, but I like it. Okay, that's my new coolest favorite plane, a new I coolest plane that I've ever seen on the field. Yeah. For those of you as curious as I was, it's a Republic CB, and now I want one in the worst way. And now it's our turn to hit the skies, but I will definitely be back to the pick and pig. Bill and McCollum traffic, Dakota 83 November is spec taxiing runway 13 McCulloch traffic. After a short run up, we take off and hurdle ourselves west off the short runway and over the mountains. McCulloch traffic, Dakota 83 November, taking off runway 13. Are you ready to go? Hell yeah, man. That's fun as hell. <laughs> I love it. It's about two hours to get home from here, and we talk all the way back. And we managed to get the plane put up before dark. That was a delicious meal. That was that fun. Was, that was that was real fun. I haven't had uh, Carolina barbecue in Carolina. I think that was my first time. We ate for three people. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, we had three, three meals and three desserts. Three plates, three, three desserts. Uh, we got a good little sample of what they had, though. They were out of brisket. We weren't done with the ribs yet, but we got to try the pork and chicken. I like that whole environment. Yeah, it was a cool vibe, but like the restaurant, all of the people that were there, both eating locals and transients were, were fun and cool. Oh and yeah. I'll definitely do that again. If you go, you should go on a Saturday because that's when they have ribs and go and show up after five. So summer's great to do that because then you still got plenty of daylight. Yeah. Flying over the mountains in the summer can be hairy some days. True. Especially that time of day, if you're planning on getting there close to five, you'd be uh, right there in the heat in the day over the mountains. I actually am interested in doing like an actual mountain, um, a mountain flying. I don't know if they do classes or what, but just kind of get some specific training. You know, many times since I make a trip over there, and I know they're not huge mountains, but the, the one time I got in some real good mountain wave was coming back over the Smokies. The ride back gave me some time to reflect. 
We met some great people in Carthage, and as things settle down with the pandemic, I look forward to meeting and hanging with the very best that aviation has to offer. We hope you'll join us on upcoming adventures. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can enjoy more episodes of Plain Delicious.